One of my favourite genres for photography, and I'm sure I'm not alone, is landscape photography. And actually, I love the editing process when it comes to landscape photography as well. Whether you want to get the photo looking the way you kind of saw it through the viewfinder, whether you want to get it looking the way you saw it in your mind's eye, or whether you really want to push it to experiment a bit with what you can do with that photo, there is so much you can do in the edit, and it's a super creative process. It also, I think, really helps to inform you what is important to you in your photography. I think it can make you a better photographer. So that's what we're going to investigate today. We're going to dive into Lyra we're going to look at landscape photography editing. We're going to start with some basic edits, how you can kind of make those basic corrections, get the photo kind of where it needs to be as a solid foundation or indeed where you saw it through the viewfinder. Then we're going to move on to some more advanced techniques and how you can make that photo really shine, really pop. We're gonna get into it. Let's roll the intro first. It's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh, Mmm, a fresh photography tutorial. I got a little bit too into that one. Let's dive in to Lyra Classic. Now we're gonna be working with this photo. This is taken up on Beachy Head, so on the South Downs. It actually is around sunset, although it's a little bit overexposed, but we're gonna fix all of that kind of stuff, right? We're gonna start with the basic editing that we might do when we kind of begin our Lightroom editing journey. And then we're gonna to move to more advanced techniques that you might use a bit later on that you learn along the way and just see where we can take this photo. Let's dive in. This is quite a fun one. I'm quite I'm quite excited about this one. So first up, we need to correct a little bit of the exposure here and maybe things like the white balance we're gonna take a look at as well. The first thing though, and the easy, the most important thing is the exposure. We wanna bring that straight down. So I'm gonna go in right here to the actual exposure slider and I'm gonna bring that down. I'm actually gonna bring the highlights down a little bit as well, probably quite a lot just to, bring back some detail in the sky and maybe the shadows up a touch because we're losing a bit of detail over here, this kind of farmhouse area, which is working in pretty much as our subject within the landscape. We're losing quite a lot of detail there. I'm gonna bring the clarity up a little bit because I think it's gonna help with, again, the detail, maybe a little bit of the texture, maybe a bit of vibrance as well. And I think we're gonna warm the overall photo up, not too much, but something like that. Now, immediately we've made some pretty reasonable kind of basic adjustments. So you can always see how far you've come by pressing the backslash key on your keyboard. So this is where we started. This is where we've taken it to, right? You can also press Y to see a side by side. So we've, we have fixed that exposure pretty much. And we've kind of very, very slightly adjusted the colors, which I think look pretty good. And if we come all the way down, I actually think that probably some of the only things we might want to do is enable profile corrections just to sort out any kind of distortion or vignetting that we may have had from the lens. And then actually maybe come down to the transform tab, click auto just to straighten this up a bit. And I think in terms of basic corrections, we could even maybe bring the exposure down a touch more, something like that. I think in terms of basic corrections, we're pretty much there, right? This is probably what the photo looked like to me, this is maybe what it would have looked like. And you might be absolutely happy with where this photo is now. You might be completely satisfied with taking this level again, a before and an after. But we're gonna take this a lot further. We're gonna use some more advanced techniques to make the most out of this photo. Now, the first thing I would do if I was gonna take this further, right, is now investigate a crop. What's important in the image? What's the subject of the image? And I think for me, it's absolutely this farmhouse right here. The image lends itself, I think, perfectly to a 16 by nine. I don't think we need nearly as much down the bottom here. So let's go ahead and go for the crop overlay. I'm gonna change the aspect to 16 by nine. I'm just gonna move this up a little bit and I think I'm gonna actually just bring this down a touch as well. We had a decent resolution on the camera. I think it was probably a Sony a7R5 that was used for this photo which means we've got nice loads of resolution to play around with. So something like that, maybe we can always, we can always move this around later if we want to. I think that is better for the photo, right? I think that that gives us more clarity on the subject and really allows us to focus in on it. The next thing I would do is absolutely look to fix some of this lighting even further, but for this, we're gonna to need to use masks. So I'm gonna come up here to the masking panel. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually select a radial gradient and just bring it right across the middle of the photo. I might just make this a little bit smaller. I've gone, I've gone maybe a touch too big there. So let's go something like, something like this, right? And I'm just gonna bring the exposure up. That means we're only affecting the exposure where this circle is. And if you wanna see exactly where the mask is, you can press O on the keyboard to see the red overlay like that. 
press O again to remove that. So we're going to bring the exposure up a little bit in the middle. And then to really balance that out and really focus the viewer's eye to our subject, I'm going to create a new mask, linear gradient. I'm going to bring this up from the bottom. We're almost going to sandwich it in a little bit. So something like this, right? I'm going to bring that exposure down so it's feathered in from the bottom. I'm going to do something like this, just drag it up a bit, something like that. Let's press O to see this. Let's just drag it in a bit further. Yep. Quite like that. So we're going to bring that exposure down just a touch. Well, I say just a touch. I've gone, I've gone quite heavy on it. But we want to darken that foreground to bring the viewer's eye up to our subject. We're going to actually do the same for the sky as well. I'm going to bring in another linear gradient, bring that down like so, and let's darken that. Okay, immediately what we're doing is pushing our viewer's attention and actually our viewer's eye to that center of the image, right, to the subject which is this farmhouse. So I think that's looking pretty good. What we can also do perhaps is, you know what, I might have gone too dark with the sky. What we can also do is actually come down here, add a little bit of dehaze to the sky as well, just to just to make that pop just a little bit more, the, the clouds and the actual sky up there as well. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is play around a little bit with the color. By coming up to the new mask, I'm gonna go linear gradient. I'm gonna bring this in from the top right. Now, this way, what I'm gonna do is actually cool this down with the actual color temperature. So I'm going to make that a little bit more into the blue area of that, while then coming over to another new mask, bring it in from the left, which is the direction of the sunlight, bring it in much more aggressive into the photo, something like this. I'm going to bring that exposure up a little bit. I'm going to really warm this up as well. I'm going to come down and actually bring the dehaze down a little bit as well to give us a bit of that kind of the feeling of sunlight coming in from the side. Now, if I come back up to the top, I'm gonna to come out of the masking panel. What I might now need to do is actually reduce the exposure further of the overall image. So something like this. We're really starting to push the, the feeling of the sunset, the direction of the light. We've got kind of a warmer tones over here, cooler tones up in the sky here. And we've got some, some nice light falling down here. I think the next thing we would do in this situation is actually warm up the entire photo. So let's go ahead and actually do that now. So we're going to just bring this up. I think it is, you know, it is sunset and we want to really accentuate that feeling. Now, next, let's go ahead and add a new brush uh, layer here as well. And what we're going to do is actually bring the exposure down on this. I want to accentuate some of these shadows. So we're just going to brush over these various shadows here. I just want to darken some of this area where there are shadows. I want to make that a little bit more, a little bit more obvious, a little bit more intense so that we've got a better separation of light and dark. So I think that's looking pretty good. I'm actually gonna do a little bit on this foreground as well. So a little bit like this, just where there is a little bit of little bit of darkness, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Right, let's bring the exposure down a little bit further on that mask. I actually think that looks pretty good. And then we can go ahead and do a new mask again. Let's go for brush. This time we're gonna actually up the exposure a little bit. So this time we're gonna just paint on a little bit of the subject, the sort of farmhouse over here, as well as some of these slightly brighter areas that the sun is hitting just here. So some of this stuff here, we just wanna brighten this up a touch like so. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Now these are, these are pretty small details we're kind of adding in, but if you turn that mask on and off like so, you can see it is making a little bit of a difference to the overall feel of the photo. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do a radial gradient. I'm just gonna bring that in over these hills in the background. What I wanna do is just bring the exposure up a little bit, the contrast down. I'm gonna bring the dehaze down a little bit as well because I wanna, I wanna lower the contrast ultimately of that background layer right, of landscape. So you've got the sky in the back, this kind of background layer of, of hills and then our main layer here, then the foreground. I want there to be a difference in contrast so that we are really layering this out quite well. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do another radial gradient, which I'm gonna try and encompass just this middle layer here. So something like, something like this, and I'm gonna bring that contrast up a little bit like so. Not too much, actually, we don't wanna go too crazy, just a little bit of exposure bump as well, but something like that. Now, if we were to look at the before and after, this is where the photo started. This is where we've taken it to. It's pretty significant, right? Now we might find that some of these masks, we actually wanna go back in. Let's look at something like mask six, which should be the shadows. Yeah, we just wanna go in and reduce that a little bit. So we can just click on that and just bring that exposure back up 
just a touch, something like that. I'm actually going to go ahead with holding Alt and subtract some of this area from that mask. It just is a little bit too distracting, this area here. Otherwise, I think this is actually looking really good. Let's go back to the kind of main develop tab where we're actually editing the overall photo. I'm going to come down to the tone curve. Now, I want to add a couple of points here. One in the shadows, which I'm going to bring down just a touch, something like something like this, and then a point further up on the curve, I'm going to bring up a little bit. And what I might do is actually bring the overall, the black point up just a touch to fade that lowest black point, something like that. Maybe we don't want to go quite so hard on the contrast, but I think that's looking that's looking pretty good. I'm also going to come over here to the blue channel. And what I want to do is in the shadows, I want to just pop a point in there and move that a little bit towards the blue while popping another point in the highlights and move that a little bit towards the kind of yellow, something like that. Not, not too crazy, but something a little bit like that. That's just adding a nice bit of contrast and a nice bit of coloring to the photo overall as well. Okay, a couple more things that I think we can do to really finish this photo off. The first one is I'm gonna come back in here to the sky mask, so this one here. Let's actually make that a little bit darker again, maybe bring the blacks down a little bit as well, just to make that cloud pop a little bit more. I'm also gonna go ahead and do another new mask, a radial gradient. This one, I want to almost create a bit of a vignette, right? So I'm gonna do something like this, a nice big, radial gradient in the middle. I'm going to click invert so that we're now selecting everything outside of that circle and bring the overall exposure down just a touch, something like that. And I think this is looking really good. Now you might have noticed there's a little, little dust spot must have been on the sensor that's now showing here. So we're going to come up to the remove tool. I'm going to leave these all ticked off. We don't need to use it. It's just on a cloud. So I'm just going to actually click over that. That should do a pretty good job of removing that. Yes, perfect. So that's that's looking great. I'm really happy with where this photo is. Now, there's a couple of things I would do now. The first one is I would probably walk away, right? I'd probably go and do something else 15, 20 minutes because it's always good to come back and look at this with fresh eyes, right? When you're in the midst of editing, it, it, you can get a bit carried away and not realize that you've gone 20% further than you meant to. And sometimes it's good to just come back with a fresh perspective and be able to really see that you have overstepped where you wanted to be. So I think in this one, we, we might have a little bit too much green in the photo. I'm not entirely sure. We might want to just add some magenta. Always makes me a little bit nervous adding magenta because I, I never want to put too much magenta in a photo. But I think this is looking really good. So if we look at the before and after again, this is before and then this is after. And really, while we have made a massive difference to the photo, so again, before and after, in essence, all we've actually done is played around with the exposure. We've done a bit of dodging and burning on the landscape to accentuate some of the shadows. We've accentuated that sunlight coming in from the left. We've also added to the warmth coming in from the left as well. We've played around a bit with the color. So if we look again before and after, we've got a lot more of that kind of warmth, a lot more of those golden tones in the image, which I really like. So I'm a big fan of this photo. Now, where would you have stopped? I'd love to know how far would you have taken this? Would you have done something differently? Would you go all the way back to the crop and maybe not even have done that? I'd love to know where you might have taken this or maybe you'd go even further and do something like a sky replacement. I think that'd be... That'd be pretty interesting. I don't tend to do it as much these days, but it can be an interesting thing to play around with. It can certainly change the feel of an image as well. Now, as always, there's a full list of all the kit we use for these videos, for the photos, all that stuff down in the description. So you can check that out for yourself. We've got some cool stuff coming your way as well. Kind of end of year stuff, as well as more tutorials, more reviews. There's loads of stuff coming. So make sure you subscribe to Park Cameras. Make sure to like the video as well if you enjoyed it. That always helps us out. I will, of course, see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.